do listen to my next guest, John Paul DeJoria, uh, the co-founder, chairman of the board, uh, John Paul Mitchell Systems. You know, almost everything this guy touches turns to gold. Uh, he's given a lot back. So I always like having him on because politicians frame guys like him as uh, not doing their fair share, paying their fair share, doing their fair share. Uh, John Paul, does that bother you? Not whatsoever. Everyone's equal to, let's say, their, their voice and their opinions and everything that might be out there. But I know what I do, and people that know me know what I do. And if I were to spend, you know, many millions of dollars every year making the world a better place to live, especially my own city here in Austin and the homeless people, a lot of programs were involved in, the fact that I know I did it makes me happy. And something I'd like to share with everybody is, in life, if you do something good for somebody else and never expect any kind of a thank you or reward what Whatsoever, you feel just great. So if people hmm. look at people like myself, and there's certain, quite a few people like me that were very lucky to have the American dream come true. America still works. The American dream came true for me. Homeless to having abundance. Most of us, or a lot that I know, do give back in a big way. They never boast about it. They never advertise about it. They just do because it's a thing to do. So a lot of people that are making these unruly and unwarranted comments, they just don't know. I forgive them and give them a lot of peace, love, and happiness. <laughs> <laughs> We're just doing what we should do, and that's what it's all about, sir. Well, good for you. I mean, th that's a news to you and me. Probably why I'm not a billionaire, because I'd, I'd shout to the world if I did even one good deed. But that's the difference. <laughs> so, John Paul, let me get your sense of this, because uh, the reason why I mention it is the backdrop for all of this, and even with the Inflation Reduction Act and everything that's being pushed right now on Capitol Hill, is more people should kick in um, to, to help raise revenues. And, and invariably, what's cited are guys like you or the, the, the upper crust of the society uh, to pay more in taxes. Uh, I don't know what fair share means these days because it's a moving target. But what do you think of that? Uh, you, you're taking yourself out of it, what is fair share for guys right. like you? Exactly. I think it's very silly for people to go overboard with that. Number one, as a group, we pay the majority of all the taxes in the United States of America. If you look at that 1% of the people, and then the 10%, they pay the majority of all the taxes. So I look at it as it's being unfairly done. But it's a big political thing. Needless to say, a certain party may want a certain group of people to vote for them. Now, if that group of people, let's say, is less than those that are really had the American dream come true for them in a very big way, not just a regular way, but a very big way, well, why not say, well, they're the bad guys, you're the good guys, I'm 100% for you, so vote for me. So a lot of this is political, but there's a lot of people that can't be fooled anymore. What's happening now is things are opening up, people are seeing the truth, and when you take a look at the economy, if I could mention on that for just one moment here, if you look at the economy, people are looking at what's going on now and the news, but they're not looking ahead. And I'd like to make a little comment on that if I could, because you do have a business show going on here and a damn good one. It's this. Let's look ahead a little bit. Like, yeah, things are bad now, but what's going to happen in the future? With the exception of the companies that I'm fully involved in, physically. I also am involved in starting and financing a lot of other companies. So I try and keep abreast of the future, not just what's happening now, but the future. So I want to give you an example in all your listening audience of the future. I asked some of the experts here in the world, those at Goldman Sachs, okay, where are oil and gas prices going to be in six months and in one year? Because I'm involved with this company called Just Pure and is cleaning up all the waste from oil wells being dug and all the water coming out, how to recycle that water, not just waste it. So I'm very familiar with a little bit of the industry, but where's it going to be? And this will stun you. This will be quite amazing for you and your audience. In six months from now, they project a barrel of oil to be at $125 a barrel. Wow. One year from now, $120 a barrel. So I go out to the experts to get my information, not just what people are trying to sell us. Now, how does this affect business? Paul Mitchell and other things I'm involved in, there are sure shortages out there. There's no doubt. This is for sure. We are still back order. We've been back order for quite some time, but we're still back order and we'll remain that way for a little while further to come. When you get back ordered, all of a sudden those that have it raise the price to the manufacturer. When the manufacturer has his price raised because there's a shortage, if you want it, you got to pay a little bit more because this guy will. All of a sudden they have to increase their prices. Now the public gets the same thing. It all trickles back to, well, what cost at all. A big problem in our country is we were totally sufficient when it comes to energy. Mm. A lot of hydro 
hydrocarbons. That energy is used for plastics and other things. And, you know, and that started the role. And no disrespect to those that want to go green. I want to go green. I wave the green flag, okay? But you can't do it overnight. You've got to adjust it over time and not take a nation almost to its knees because you want to go green immediately. It's got to be done like a business person would. Here's the oil and gas consumption. Here's what we want to do. Let's gradually get into it, not all of a sudden stop it and prices skyrocket, regardless of what's going on in the world. But as you know, and for the stock market, what do we do? The stock market is down, the stock market is up. I'd like to remind everybody, in 2019 and 20, our market went from, I think, 28,000 in a year or so, down to about 19,000, our stock market. But when it came back, back up again, a year or two later, it came up to 35, 36,000. It went above where it was before. So unless you need the money now or in the next two years, don't go freaking out when you lose money so you don't want to lose some more. That stock market with darn good stocks always goes cyclical and comes right back again. America still works. Sometimes we got to be a little patient. I'm more worried about what you're saying about uh, John Paul Mitchell products that they're in yeah. short supply. So I'm thinking there are a lot of people who, who aren't getting shampoo and, and they're slowly deteriorating. What, 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 what's going on there? Well, we're very fortunate because uh, my daughter, Michaeline, and Jason, of two brilliant young people, they went ahead and foresaw what was going on. So they immediately got more than one person to fill our products to help us out other than just ourselves. So we were able to cut down, believe it or not, uh, about a year and a half ago, a $40 million a month back order. I think down to now we're around $5 million or so. So wow. it's getting better and better and better, you know. But my people are doing whatever's necessary to find these extra sources. We're also looking at doing more and more. We've done the majority of all of our product manufacturing is done in the United States. Some is done in Italy with a joint venture we have with some special color. But okay. there are a lot of things done now that are going to overcome some of these shortages. But it's going to take a little while longer. And again, with gas and oil up, prices will remain high. Uh, so I think somebody right. mentioned a little earlier on your show about a purple party where red and blue. Sometimes when you go to when you go to the polls, one group says one thing politically, another. Right. One to you, very quick story. No, I'm limited on time. A friend of mine, Gary Spellman, is running for mayor of Austin, Texas. On the purple party, he made it up. Red and blue is purple. He takes no money. He will not accept a dime from anybody. You want to give him money, give it to a charity. He doesn't have money on his own, but he's saying this to everybody. I'm truly going to be a politician of the people because I'm not beholding to any party or any person. Not that there's anything wrong with any party, but he's just letting it do what it should do organically. He's given that a try. It might be the future for America. People come in saying, I'm your person opposed to being backed by a party that sometimes you agree with, sometimes you don't agree with. But the main thing is America still works and we keep on trying new things out. All right. Hope springs eternal, my friend. Thank you very, very much. Have a wonderful weekend. John Paul DeJoria, who, as long as I've known him, before he became a gazillionaire, it's the same guy you just heard there. Same guy. Uh, very, very insightful.